Hello, everybody. Ooh, it's been a long time. Uh, how's everybody? Oh, no. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> well, we just lost Mark. Yep, we just lost Mark. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as we go, he's like, uh, he's like, I'm, remember, everybody. Uh, I'm ready to go live. <laughs> Goodbye, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? Got the first technical error <laughs> of, the, of, the, of the stream. That that means right. that everything else is going to go smoothly, right? That's yeah. the update, guys. There we go, and there we go. Uh, okay, I can click this mark. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure? I, just I am sure. That okay. was fun. That that was the icebreaker. <laughs> yeah, that was the it's like we were um, like, let's go live. Boom, Mark's <laughs> gone. I'm like, what yeah, just the, happened? The whole morning we've been uh, preparing for this stream, and um, it, it's just there's so many things going on, especially working from home, and just making sure that this setup is not going <laughs> to fall apart because um, you're sort of sharing your personal setup and your work setup, and just um, you know. We joked that something's going to go wrong, and I'm glad that it happened at the beginning. So, um, Well, we got lots of stuff for you today. So first of all, just to talk about this for a second, um, there's going to be no community highlights today. We're going to get right into it. This is going to be a longer stream. Um, there's going to be a short uh, QA uh, at the end, but we'll get into that uh, when we actually get to that point. Um, we have tons of stuff for you. It's literally ridiculous. Um, uh, so, But, uh, Mark, there is a couple of things off the bat that you wanted to get out of the way. Yes. Yep. So... Tear off the Band-Aid, uh, no battle tanks in this update, so that's not coming back yet. No trains. Um, there's a couple of things that are going to be gone from the game, which are... Um, Drum roll. <laughs> everyone's going to be surprised with this. Uh, the legacy foxholes and the gun turret. So um, those are axed, and uh, we'll see what uh, comes in place of them. In this Deal stream. with it. There are no more foxholes and foxholes. <laughs> They're yes. fossils? Yeah, yeah fossils. it's no longer, yeah. Oh, and the other thing I want to mention was that um, there's more to this update than what we're presenting on the stream. Um, in fact, we had a really hard time in figuring out what we can fit in. Um, so in terms of a lot of the... What you're going to see on this stream is more a higher level um, summary of all the features. But in terms of all the nitty gritty, all the game balance, all the numbers, all the other changes, and even some small features. Um, a lot of it is just going to not be on the stream, but you will see it on the dev branch, which is coming very, very soon. So just this want is, to get that out of the way. This is also a gigantic stream. Like you'll understand when we, yeah, it's going to be a while. Strap in, get yourself a snack <laughs> and uh, yeah. I, I actually like I actually recommend getting a snack, maybe some water, a little <laughs> coffee or something. Why did this go down? Anyway. Um All right, are we ready to you want, just want to get started? Let's yep. get let's get started. Um just wanted to share a couple things because the community has grown a lot uh this year and there are things that a part of our history that just wanted to talk about. Um and this is that really we started working on Foxhole five years ago. Um, and at the time, our team was only seven people. And we really had um, a goal, a pretty crazy goal that um, seemed like pretty, uh, pretty hard to achieve um, at the time with that team size. And we said, hey, let's make a game where um, we have hundreds, if not thousands of players in a persistent war. They're all working together for a common goal. Um, and all aspects of the war are driven by players. So we said, hey, look, even um, so the weapons are made by players. They're brought to the front by players. Every drop of fuel, every, every bullet, every tank is made by players. Um, and we, we started on this journey. And um, it's been a while. And I think that it's been... A lot of updates, but we're finally starting to get close to that. And a couple of things, there's been a few things in our philosophy that we've always tried to keep um, when trying to achieve this goal. Uh, one is we really have a gameplay, gameplay first approach. Um, so that might mean a lot of things to people, but what it means to us is that almost every choice that we make, um, we consider the gameplay first. So we don't think about, hey, how can we shoehorn this into 
a microtransaction? How can we try to like add in some skins for the game and we change the game for that? It it's always comes back to what is best for the gameplay. And then the other thing is we're always out to try new things because we really feel like without going outside of our comfort zone, we wouldn't have gotten to where we're at right now. We've gone to where we're at by doing things that at some times they weren't very popular choices. Um, but we felt very strongly about pushing in the direction to reach these goals. Um, so that's always something that we've done in the past and we're going to keep on doing in the future is trying, trying new things out, trying things out, see if it works. If it doesn't work, that's fine. We can always go back to what we had before. Um, so there have been a lot of updates. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is this is not every update. This is uh, some some of the bigger ones. Um, but I wanted I wanted to ask you, Julian, what what were the updates that um, you were the most proud of? In terms of the painting and whatnot. <laughs> in terms of the, oh, in terms of the stuff. In terms of the stuff the programmers did. Um, in promo, I'd, like uh, War Machine's cool, Arm Race I love, Winter Army, um, I, the original one I still look at and love, uh, same with the, the, even though the world map needs updating and the top center one, I love that one a ton. Um, that one and, is actually it, really cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. That one is like objectively like really interesting, even though yeah. it seems kind of simple. That was actually probably technically very hard. Mm hmm. I uh, know <laughs> it was. Um, and it's out of date now. So people don't, that world not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of out of date, the dead center, the twin battle tanks, that was a lot of fun to work on. Um, and then we took out the battle tanks. So that's and, and the most inaccurate one of all is my favorite of the, of the <laughs> nine. <laughs> so we have just as a summary, we've done, it's been five years. We've done 45 updates. It's been a lot. Um, seven major releases. Um, and you know, what's, what's really cool is that after five years, um, we've definitely had our ups and downs. Um, but I, I, I think this year has sort of, we've started to see where things are leading to. We, we've had just a couple of stats. We've had our longest war this year. We've had the most amount of concurrent players in a war. We've had, um, the most number of players in general in a war so across the span of four and in terms of just the overall concurrent player count we've also um had the most this year so it's nice to see after all these updates uh we're finally here uh but for this next update um foxhole entrenched we are going back to finish up some of the work that we did in trench warfare so for those of you that were here about a year and a half ago was when we added trenches to the game um, there were some things that we wanted to get done there that we didn't have time for. So we're coming back around to get those things done. And another big thing is um, in, in War Machine, we uh, unified the world into hex-shaped regions. Um, and we're also coming back around now to kind of finish some of the work that uh, we started there, right? Um, but, but what does that mean? <laughs> I have no idea what it means. I'm just saying random things right now. <laughs> um, so there's four big features coming. Uh, the, the complete world. Um, so this is the world we wanted to build at the beginning. Um, the tactical camera. This is to be the dark horse feature of this update. <laughs> it's the least yep. flashy, but I, in my opinion, and in, in the opinion of many people on the team, this is, this is going to change the game. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the uniforms. So everyone's been expecting this. I, I've dropped hints, uh, which I probably shouldn't have, which Matt was giving me a hard time about yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but uniforms are finally here, and we're going to talk about how we're going to incorporate them into the game. And finally, the building update coming back around to some of the stuff we didn't finish for Trench Warfare. So let's start with the world complete world so a little you know again a little bit of a history lesson here um on fox School's development when we started the game uh we, we had less than 50 people in the world and this was during the pre-alpha phase um nobody knew about the game and we had to scream and shout to even get 50 people into a war um we started building out the deadlands which was the first region and um 
that's where we started. Eventually, at first, it was just a part of a map, a part of a region. Eventually, we built it out to a whole region. From there, we started adding more regions onto that. Um, and we were trying to, at the time, the wars weren't even really like wars now. They were actually uh, more like matches set in a region because we didn't yeah. have the mm -hmm. tech or the gameplay or the content in place to actually have a persistent war that would last for weeks. Um, so, so we created this mode. It was the campaign mode, and it was just our way of trying to reach at, at the final goal um, without having the tools yet. So in campaign mode, you would actually fight on each region, and as you win them, it became sort of like a winning a region in, in like a grand strategy game. Um, but, what, but what we really want was to put the all the regions together into the same war so that you're fighting them at the same time. And we did that in world conquest mode, um, which we added shortly after launching into early access. And it was a really bumpy ride when we first put all the regions uh, together. Traveling at the border was um, not a great experience. <laughs> um, and there was just a lot of, there wasn't even a queuing system at some point. Um, so it was a really, it was a really, uh, really painful experience, but it got the job done at the time. Um, and since then, uh, well, rather, when we got to that point, um, we got it working decently in update. By update 20, World Conquest was starting to feel, feel a little bit like what it's like now. But one of the big things that players um, would always bring up is that the, the pieces of the world didn't quite fit together. Because, <laughs> uh, Matt, maybe you talk about this for a second, but we built them separately, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, they were each built like as individual maps. They were, um, there, there was the thought that they would come together, but at the time, the mandate that was sort of just like, make the map separate. Like, don't worry about if it's a different size. All the maps you see here, there were different, like, dimensions and everything. <laughs> so, like, there's no way that they could... We had to come up with this whole system of, like, a, a sort of uh, averaging out coordinates so that people would end up on a place that made yep. sense on their other map. And so it was, like, a whole nightmare. So we were like, we need to, we need to fix this. We need to do something that makes more sense. That's right. And actually, these, these, this picture on the right is actually from a Reddit post from a player trying to map out where all the connection points were. <laughs> yeah. um, so eventually, in, uh, in the War Machine update, we um, turned the regions into hexes uh, because um, we wanted them to fit together nicely. And I think this, at that point, we were reasonably satisfied. This was uh, large enough for us to get our goals across, but we always felt like um, it, it needed one more step, right? Um, and that's the step we're taking now. So we're expanding the world into the north and the south. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for this. Um, the main reasons is that we feel like in order to execute on, on, on the full scale of the type of war that we want to see, we just need more room, right? So we want the front line yeah. to be able to move more forward and back. We want people there to be more interesting things that can happen to the front because we feel like right now, um, when the front line moves a little bit, it already feels like the war is almost over. But we want there to be more room so you can get, you can be pushed back a bit more. The shape of the front line can change, and then maybe you can push back, right? Um, and another uh, big reason for this is we 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 want to be able to have many more different types of starting conditions, which wasn't possible, which wasn't as possible with the current world, because this world goes can go more or less in any direction, right? Yeah. So we can go north south, we can go east west, and there this are was, some lower constraints. Yep. This was the original plan. I just want to bring that up, bring that up. When when uh, we originally started exploring what a hex world could look like, this was the size that was originally pitched. Um, this was the one that we sort of settled on. Then we were like, we can't make this many regions at once. <laughs> like, it was like too impossible. So um, we we're kind of like coming to the point where we're like, this is the size we originally wanted to reach for. Um, yes. And um, so there's 14 new regions, bringing it up to 37 hexagon tiles. Um, we kind of see this like a board game that you can reconfigure at the start of every war. Um, and another side benefit is that if the front line 
direction ever changes, we don't suddenly get shrunk down, which um, does add to the uh, issues of queuing. If you go right now, we ha can, can span about seven regions wide. If it flips over, it's, it, it could turn to five or less, right? So hopefully this new world is going to um, sidestep some some of those issues but the coolest part about this new world i know we can talk about you know like the gameplay the war and all this stuff but um oh before i yeah, get to that actually that, yeah. mm -hmm. it's just sort of a mock-up of the potential ways that uh the board game world can can be set up um and i just feel like this is much less claustrophobic right now matt it just feels so claustrophobic sometimes mm -hmm. like when we come up with the war configs we're like can we do it this way? Can we do it that way? And so many ways have, um, every time we try to do something new, we just start running into a problem because there's just not enough space, right? Yeah. Um, so this is going to free us up to be able to do a lot. So now, hopefully getting to the cool stuff, we're finally going somewhere, Matt. Maybe you can talk about this. Yeah, Matt. Yeah, so the new maps, um, this was an opportunity. We really wanted to spread a little bit further out of uh, the main country, which is uh, Siva is the country that it's always been. Uh, but we wanted to push south, so all of the new southern maps ta are, are, are canonically in um, quote-unquote colonial territory. Um, it is uh, more of a Mediterranean uh, vibe. Uh, we it, it Basically, you know, like Mediterranean France uh, area was kind of the the inspiration for, 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 for this part of the world. Um, and we really, really wanted to push into it. We wanted you guys to feel like you're in a different place. You're in a different country. Um, and as you go further north, it changes and changes and changes. Um, and we also felt like the Colonials, you know, they've never really got to have any of their stuff in the game. They've never been able to have sort of an identity in the world itself. And that was something I really wanted to uh, push for this update. If we were going to add all these maps, I wanted to really push and say, like, let's give the Colonials something uh, to, to kind of call their own. Cool. We're also going north of, of Siva as well, um, which we I don't know if we show much of, but uh, we are going... There's a few maps that are canonically in a country called Nick Nevin. So... Um, the there is a little bit there too uh it's not quite as different as this but just for the people who care about that Co um, colonial bias there huh? <laughs> adding well clear the wardens don't have a single house in the game matt so we actually also another thing that we did matt um i skipped over this was that we intentionally want to add a lot a, a lot more water to the game yeah um and this is in preparation for something big that i'm really excited about that's gonna happen in about a year from now so yeah it's also uh, worth mentioning just <laughs> just just as a just, th just as a disclaimer all the stuff here is work in progress so this map is not 100 percent like exactly what like some of the land masses are, are a little different and stuff but regardless like that's basically it what what are these so these are the new town bases um so one of the things we're doing in this update is we're going back to refresh a lot of the oldest things in the game right so the town halls that you have in the game now are, are are probably five years old or certainly four years old at this point um so we went back and we wanted to bring the bases in town up to date with some standards we have in for the other bases like the safe houses the bunker bases the relic bases so um these uh new bases have full interiors so you can go on the inside like the safe houses um there are ai defenses um and another big thing though on the theming side is we really wanted to have more than one type because we wanted it to we wanted the type of uh town base to feel like just another building in a town whereas the current one feels almost too special almost too like video gamey we wanted to just be like hey there is a school in this smaller town here, and um, the the it's just being used. It's just being used by the armies, right? Mm -hmm. But it it's not actually a, like a mm -hmm. special like building in that regard. We we missed the chance in our preamble to say that we've taken uh, town halls out of the game. We we've act, there's no more or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, these these are cool. They you know they have interiors. They they basically function a lot more like the uh, relic base, or the safe houses too. Or the safe houses. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're a lot more functional. So yeah, we have uh, we have new garrison houses as you probably guessed. Um, uh, in the southern regions, there are new garrison houses. Um, totally different style. They play totally differently. The interiors and everything. It's all totally different. 
um, from the way that the uh, the ones in the north uh, feel uh, to give these southern regions a little bit more of their own identity. Cool. Let's get to the first video. Come on. <laughs> yeah. How's that? Is that is that going? Hopefully. There we go. Yep. New Southern vibe. Terminus is one of the coolest new regions um, in the southeast part of the world. Oh, it has it, a huge port. Yeah, I was going to say, now that we I have, we totally forgot to talk about it, there are two new cities as well. Um, uh, there's uh, Therizo, which is a place that a lot of people probably know, and Callum's Keep uh, in the north. So uh, Therizo is in uh, Terminus, uh, and Callum's Keep is in uh, Callum's Cape. <laughs> <laughs> Um, some of these regions have been sort of planned for a really long time in, ter in, in, in my mind and in, in, in some of the planning, the really early planning that was done. So I'm really, really excited to see them in the game now. And you said you wanted to touch on some of the lore, like lo visiting locations in the lore now more yeah. than ever before. Yeah. yeah. Red River, Matt, where are we... Yeah, where have we heard that? Have we heard that? That's a name. That's a familiar name. <laughs> um, yeah, it was really fun. Honestly, it was really fun conceptualizing all of this just because there's a lot, a lot of stuff that I, mm -hmm. I, I knew that some players would be really looking forward to, and there's a lot of places to explore and, and stuff. Um, uh, to, on that point, in the south, we in the south and north, we actually have all sorts of new uh, foliage and, and stuff like that to really kind of make it feel like you're traveling some distance, like uh, across the map. Um, that was. That was a, another big part of it. I mean, you can see here, like, uh, there, there's some new textures on the ground. There's obviously new foliage. There's, like, cypress trees and stuff like that. Um, new, new, totally new type of grass. It's a, basically we're treating it like a new biome entirely uh, in the south. Um, is there new snow <laughs> in the north, though? All, all new there snow. There is actually new snow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in some places, yeah. And um, these... Uh town bases do have varying amounts of health so it's no longer the same amount of health for every town base yeah like it was with the old town halls um i guess you know a pertinent pertinent to gameplay um uh there is a host of new um lodgy regions as well um so uh a lot of the previous lodgy regions won't necessarily be lodgy regions anymore um going forward so uh they've been pretty custom built to be lodger regions this time around um and uh i think that'll be pretty exciting yeah there's a whole a whole nother layer of lodgy like a whole a whole nother row in the world yeah um that's not to say that we can't use the previous lodger regions as lodger regions again though that's that's all in our system now that we can we can do so let's talk about the camera mark <laughs> tactical camera so this what, one is exciting it? it's the least flashiest feature but i think it's probably one of the most important features are you nuts? This thing's great. <laughs> yeah. So um, if you've been around, one of the longest uh, standing complaints that players have, have, have had, and we've shared this complaint, um, we've been very critical of the camera. Um, it, it's been this um, issue that has been with the game for five years, and that is that um, the aiming at the corner is the most effective way to play and that just kind of sucks because um it, you know you don't want to play a game where only one part of your screen is uh is the most is the most useful right so there's other problems different aspect ratios provide different advantages um there's been some really jerky movement when you move the camera really quickly if you rotate it really quickly and you aim um and the biggest thing for me though is that your situation awareness is much less than it should be. So we actually watch these wars very closely. And sometimes we, um, you know, we, we, we watch the battles from, from a high above so we can see how they play out. So we can see um, how well some of our game balance changes are working. Um, and it's often that we see the battlefield from a 
higher vantage point and we ask ourselves, hey, why aren't players doing this? Why aren't they doing that? And they simply don't have the information that they need, right? If you have the binoculars, you can kind of have that information, but in general, in real life, you're able to see a lot further than you can in the game, right? So we've tried various things in the past. Um, past updates, this is not a problem that we've only started working on recently. We've actually been trying different things through the years. Um, we've tried to just zoom the camera out. Um, doesn't That doesn't solve the corner aiming. Um, we've tried a technique where we just simply try to bring the camera in as you move to the corner, but we found through testing that that introduces a lot of jerky behavior in your input and, and overall it doesn't feel good. So um, we did a lot of research this year and we arrived at a new camera system, which is multi-target camera. Um, and I won't get too far into the technical nitty gritty stuff, but essentially how this works is that instead of the camera just following your aim, we actually constantly have four targets that we want that represent the space in the world that we want the player to be able to see. And the camera parameter and transformations automatically update themselves at all times um, to be able to keep those four points on screen. So it doesn't matter if you're looking up, it doesn't matter if you're looking down or in the corner, um, the viewable space is um, as much as possible, it, it tries to be, it tries to show the same amount of space. Now it's not, it's not 100% perfect. So there is with it like a small, percentages, maybe at some points you can see slightly more or slightly less. And we're constantly um, fine tuning the parameters of this. We'll continue to do it throughout the dev branch. Um, but I think when you first use it, you will see um, how much better it is, right? Now, can, we say, you, yeah. can we say in layman's terms, it's a smart camera? <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's <laughs> kind of lame, Matt. It's a lame name. If, if you're, if you're... Adaptive <laughs> camera? Yeah. I made up a Star Trek <laughs> name for it. Multiphasic multi-physic adaptive camera how about that <laughs> how, how about how about if you're not a tech person it's magic did we just it magic did it and we're done <laughs> so um the benefits of the new tactical camera um re vastly reduced the need to aim in the corner in fact i almost almost say now that in many cases aiming in the corner might not even be as good um your situation awareness is much better than before so you'll be able to um, spot a tank that is trying to flank you. Or if you're trying to flank, you have much more information um, to actually perform a flank, right? Whereas previously, you wouldn't. Um, when you're driving, you have increased visibility, so you can just generally see more. Um, movement of the camera has been, has been smoothed out. Um, and uh, the camera performs better at different aspects ratios. There's one more feature, and this is going to be important later when we talk about the building update, um, you can hit a key now to actually see the roofs of structure. So before, if you're in a trench network, you can't see if someone's standing on top of the bunker. Now you can, right, with a simple push of a key. Um, so to go along with this, well, there's a little bit of a history here, but um, we are adding new rifles. But Julian, you want to say something about why? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh a whole bunch of rifles were planned for uh, the Winter Army update, but Mark was excited for the new camera changes. And with the new camera changes comes a we relooked at the guns and the ranges. There wasn't a dramatic alteration in ranges to weapons, but Mark wanted to hold back new guns with the to kind of announce and release at the same time as the new camera. So we have a uh, swath of new rifles and some one really, really old rifle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's coming important to, to the game. It's important to note that the, that the long rifles, it, well, another reason why it was held back is because it didn't work as well with the old camera, but with the new tactical camera, it just works much better, right? Yep. Um, so here we have the Volta repeater um, and <laughs> Matt, do you want to talk about the history of this? Because I don't think everybody necessarily knows the history of this weapon. So for those who were who have only joined in the last, I guess, like two years, um, we had an event um, where we hid a bunch of uh, things in vaults that were uh, also hidden around the um, uh, around the world. Um, unfortunately, some players decided to like hack into it, um, but uh, that's a whole other story for another day. Anyway, inside one of these vaults was um, 
uh, uh, weapon racks of Volta repeaters. They were like relic weapons that were uh, like one shot kills, um, and they were they were pretty cool. Um, and uh, people really liked them. Uh, it was really fun to to make and everything. And people always clamor for them. And it was one of those things where we're like. Yeah, we should. Let's just let's make it. Let's make it. It you know, it's no longer a relic. They figured out how to make it again. They figured out how to put some pieces of metal and wood together. And and we decided to keep this legacy look of the gun, right? That's the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so with the with the Volta, it um it has been rebalanced, but it still has a chance to one shot. Um, but the trade off is it's very clunky. Um, it takes long to aim, so you're not going to be able to move really quickly and still be able to get an accurate shot with it. Um, the long rifle just it it shoots a bit further than um, uh, a norm rifle, but the firing time is longer. So time yeah, between shots. It has a bolt, like a longer bolt cycle before you get your next shot. Mm-hmm. Now, Julian, you want to talk the, about these? Yeah, the uh, Wardens also needed an equivalent um, relic gun, and this is, I'll let Matt talk about this one because it's his favorite gun. Ah, uh, yeah, the, the Hangman uh, 757 is a um, is a uh, a rifle that is basically like a massive revolver. Um, it is um, comparable to uh, imagine both the like. Imagine both the Volta and the Hangman were used in, like, the early days of, like, non-flintlock firearms. Automatic, quote-unquote, automatic firearms or lever-action firearms. But the Wardens thought they were hot shit by creating, like, a revolving, uh... uh, (laughs) It's a good description. Yeah. Wardens think they're hot A revolving revolving magazine um, as opposed to a, um, a standard magazine with a bolt action. So it does take revolver ammunition. Um, that's its that's its thing, um, and that's unique to the wardens. Um, I really like the gun. Uh, their the cinder, their long rifle is their long rifle. Um, it has the the two long rifles are statistically different from one another. Um, but again, this was just we could we could have a longer ranged gun now because of the new camera. So we did it. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and my personal favorite is the automatic rifle, which is exactly what it says it is. It is a full auto rifle uh, that in classic warden style has a uh, press F single fire function. Uh, and this is kind of a counter to the Dusk um, machine gun or the uh, Dusk assault rifle. Um in that it is medium to close, you're not with full auto. You're not going to be hitting anything at range with it, uh, and you're just going to be dumping rifle rounds at close to medium to being in a trench range. Great, time for the next video. I forgot. I legitimately forgot that was in this the gun video coming up. Yeah, it's the gun and the camera video. Yep. Yes. <sighs> All right. Someone it's just the... came in the chat asking any map changes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone say no. Everybody say no. <laughs> I think you missed something, bud. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we actually did some more tuning from between the time this video was made and Edao, so it actually works. Um, a little better than this. And like I mentioned, um, because this is so new, uh, there there might be quirks still that we have to figure out. There's numbers that we have to tune, um, but we're confident through the dev branch we'll be able to get it right. But as you can see here, um, every direction, you more or less can see the same amount. So the, the corners not favor. Even down, you'll be able to see the um, same amount. You'll have the same amount of reach. Right. Will the old vets be able to break away from corner aiming? Though? They're like muscle memory is to corner aim. The muscle so. <laughs> memory gets me all the time. I, <laughs> when I was making these, when I was making some of the uh, videos, I had to redo them because I was still aiming at the corner just by my instinct. Right. So um, this is some testing we did on live, um, but in an observation role only. Um, so we were just using it to see 
see how far um, and see how well this works. But especially in um, a live environment, it, it was important to take a look at like how, how it would yeah. affect things in a live environment. It's yeah, very right. different. Sorry. We, we were totally cheating. Admit it, Mark. Admit it live. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, we basically um, wanted to make sure that it was well-tuned for actual gameplay in a live situation when there's lots of players running around and actual live players. Um, but as you can see, you're just able to get much better, situa better situational awareness than you were with the previous camera. Um, and this this information, I can't stress how much it changes the game. Um, just just being able to get that information is really important. So I remember um, when we were first testing the new camera, um, I literally like had a hard time playing without it. Like, uh, yeah, there was a, there were, we did one like we 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 played uh, like a, a small operation once, and I was like, I, like it, it was just like I could, I, I can't go back. <laughs> like it's it was so hard. Um, just because like once you get used to this, it's like game changing. It was like the driving. Like driving is so much better now than it was before. But at first, it's really weird. But then you just can't go back. Um, it, it's very sim. I, I feel like it's very similar to to that. Um, did we say it also worked with vehicles? Like, yeah. So yeah. Um, this actually brings up a couple of of other uh changes which is that um you can actually scope now even without a weapon held um so basically in almost every scenario now you're able to see the full distance so we're not limiting you it doesn't make sense anyways like why can you see less when you're not holding a weapon um the only thing is when you're running and you're not focused down on your aim um you won't be able to see far and to us that is a game balance thing if you're running um you can't see far, but otherwise you should be able to focus in. And if you're on a vehicle mount, like a tank turret, you'll be able to get that as well. New guns! <laughs> <laughs> this one, Adam actually wasn't firing it in full auto, but it fires a lot faster than that. <laughs> yeah, if you if you put it in auto mode and hold down the trigger, it can, yep. it can go. You can waste your entire 12 round clip really fast. Okay. If if you can tell, I'm excited for that gun. I feel like we need a break or yeah. something. <laughs> let's uh, let's let's delay the rest of the stream. We'll come back in a week. <laughs> let's guys, can uh, let's <laughs> cancel the stream. We're done. We're out of here. There's, yeah, nothing more to see here, guys. Yeah, right, we told you guys to settle in. Let's get let's get settled in. <laughs> now we're getting. I feel like <laughs> I feel like uniforms is is um it is the least kind of like unexpected feature, but. Really cool, right? Most expected. Um, oh yeah, sorry, most expected. <laughs> got, got my wires. Got my wires. So you, so some um, of you were wondering in the chat why the characters had no backpacks. Yeah, yeah. Why do the characters? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Um, so want to talk a little bit about um how we ended up doing uniform. So obviously, this has been talked about, speculated about, um, planned for many years. Um. But really, we've always wanted to make sure that when we came around to do uniforms, that we're doing it the right way. And this goes back to the gameplay first goal that I talked about at the beginning. So we're not in it to add uniforms to try to sell like microtransactions. We're not trying to um, put in some sort of like artificial, artificial progression into the game to try to increase player retention or any of that crap. We simply want them to be a part of the war like everything else is in the game, right? Everything in Foxhole is part of the war, so so should the uniforms. So um, uniforms are going to be part of the logic chain. They're made in crates. They're brought up to the front, and they're going to um, provide uh, gameplay modifiers that we feel make sense for wearing, wearing that uniform. So it's really important to us that they um, they did not feel like they gave you a magical ability. It was not like a, a class or something that you might find in in some other like MMO, right? But we really want to do things like, okay, let's look at how many slots do you have in your bag? How many things can you carry? Is your uniform better um, suited to carry um, certain items over other items? So um, for, for example, a medic should be more effective at um, carrying things like a uh, first aid kit, uh, blood plasma, um, and things that they need. 
Um, and we wanted to provide things like if you wear a, uh, a so uniforms that might protect you from a snowstorm, right? Or it might protect you from a rainstorm, right? So these are the kind of modifiers that um, we're going to be applying to the uniforms. Um, um, yep. It's worth noting here, visually, we were aiming for something that effectively didn't stand out. Like, we're not making Fortnite characters here. Um, we're not, like, this isn't a total cosmetic change to make you look like the cool action hero you want to look like. This is, we want a unified army across the board, and everyone is a piece of that army, is the kind of idea. So a lot of it, a lot of the uniforms, uh, well, we tried a bunch of, visually, we tried a bunch of drastically different stuff, uh, but we really all agreed on the idea that it was equipment, what you were carrying, and in some cases, like weather and the, like there is room for different outfits, scouts and whatnot. But for the most part, you are a unified fighting force. Um, that's it. That's my ramble. No, that's a super important point. You are a cog in the wheel and you are still a cog in the wheel. So, yep. um, and we won't spend too much time. Oh, sorry. I was yes. going to say, most important, are they lore accurate names for everything, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so we'll take a quick look at these, but we have a video that it is kind of long, so it won't stay here too long. You'll get a closer look. Um, these are the colonial uniforms, um, and these are the warden uniforms that we are launching with. Um, and oh yeah, we're launching. There was fifteen uniforms at launch, and yes. at at launch is very important for that because there's more to come. Yes, we have many more spec'd out and in progress. Great. So, yep. hurry up, video. I want to see uniform. <laughs> All right. So the legion, like the basic legionary soldiers, lost their backpack <laughs> because they're not they're not intended to be carrying as many B mats and uh, building equipment they right off the bat. They, they forgot it at home. They forgot. They forgot it, it at home. Yeah. <laughs> But they are equipped to carry ammo much more effectively than other uniforms, right? Yes. Small arms, uh, machine guns, rifles. And uh, everybody knows what a medic does. <laughs> the, um, oh, it's worth noting the soldiers are the default in, now in the game. So you'll always, like, you always spawn in as a soldier. Yeah. And we still do continue to expect um, most players to be in the default soldier uniform. Um, so, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, that too. Everybody can still do everything in the game. No matter what uniform yeah. you're wearing, you can perform it. Uh, it's just a matter of are you optimizing for that task. So Which I'm going to be a medic uniform doing heavy artillery, yeah. Julian. How about that? <laughs> But what I like about that is sure. theoretic theoretically in a war, like you would have you know, you would maybe have some specialized gear for like what your what your task is for any given operation. Yep. Or if like, you know, if you are a field medic, like, you know, you could potentially be in situations that like is not like I think that's kind of the goal we're going for here, right? It's like absolutely. if you want to play as a, a medic uh style of character, you absolutely can, but that's not gonna stop you from being on the front line if you need to be. The scouts are super exciting. And I'll let Mark explain why. Yes, so they have um, chance, a less chance of being caught by enemy intel sources. Um, so if you're running around as a partisan, um, the enemy can still find you, but it's just, it's just harder, right? So you'll be able to out-maneuver uh, a QRF force more easily than before. And uh, it's worth noting that we have intentionally made the Wardens the superior Winter Army fighters. So 
go wardens and deal with it, colonials. But they still have a. Oh, they still have. A, you, you guys still have uh, winter gear. Yeah. There's uh, the wardens will just like their winter gear a little bit better. This is probably one of my favorite uniforms. Oh, oh I love the tank. Yeah. yeah, I love the scouts. I love the tank stuff. So you can be a proper tank crew now, instead of a guy with a giant backpack sitting in the top of a tank. <laughs> <laughs> so that means that we're going to be cranking up the dial on the on on the storm modifiers, right, Julian? Oh yeah, now we have we... now we we can go full on with the storm modifiers. Yeah, you guys hated it before, and now we can uh, do whatever the hell we want. <laughs> <laughs> Infantry, I love the uh, warden yeah, the warden course. infantry guy. We both really love. Yeah. Now, what what protection? Because the wardens have one less uniform. What protection were they lacking again? Uh, the rain. But yeah, they, you guys might have a bit more trouble in the rain. Yeah, but your winter gear, as you mentioned, Julian, is better than the yep uh, colonial. And I personally love the warden medic. I just, I don't know. He looks, he still looks like an infantryman, but he's got the medic gear. I just, I don't know. I really like it. Warden, we can be by, we can be uh, faction bias based on uniform now. I'm uh, warden, <laughs> warden medic, <laughs> warden medic bias for me. I can't keep track of all the different types <laughs> of biases that there are. There's tank bias, there's yep. uniform bias. I love this. The specialist overcoat is one of my favorites. This is your faction-specific different uh, counter to the, gren the Grenadier. And the... Okay, if you want classic foxhole, you have to become an engineer. If you want the backpack, <laughs> if you, want the backpack you have to be lo a building engineer, logy. I love this. Three guys standing in a hole with shovels. Just, just, a, just a couple of bros holding some yeah. shovels. <laughs> no, that's, that's I don't know what you do on your weekends, but I like to <laughs> dig holes and stand in them. That was a strange looking hole, too. <laughs> it was a strange Oh, this one is awesome. This, yep. this uh, scout. Oh, and this um, the Warden Scout does have some protection against snowstorms as well, on yep. top of the. Uh, the light stealth against intel sources, but the, the colonial one can be um, does have slight slightly better stealth. Yeah, colonials are slightly stealthier. Wardens are slightly warmer. <laughs> this one I love. This was a, I did the sketch just a lot like the sketch for this outfit. I did a long time ago, and I just kept it around. I was like, I love this sketch. I'm gonna <laughs> push it forward until we can. Hey, wasn't it wasn't that in one of the previous yep. art concept yep. art that <laughs> people have people have seen this before. Oh, the videos. Cool. Oh yeah, video dipped a bit dipped. in quality. It's because I like it. It's because I like it. Yeah, it's because you like it. <laughs> and here's here's the um, previous promo arts heavy winter jacket. So you guys will be able to make some good pushes in uh, heavy weather. Or heavy snow, rather. I let all the detail just gone because there's snow on their shoulders. But it still looks good. All right. Yeah, that's the first offering of uniforms. I hope you, uh, hope you guys are excited. <laughs> it's been a, a long ask for feature. Um... That actually, I have a slightly entertaining tale. Uh, a while ago, I had a hard drive crash, and I lost some of the original uniform concepts from uh, about like two or three years ago when we were chipping away at it. Uh, so for this, for the uniforms, we effectively redid everything, like um, got everything I had left, and then we re went over all the concept art. And when you guys, I'll there will be a dev blog where I'll show you guys all the uh, uniform stuff. Yeah, it's you know, it's it's crazy looking back because there's been these features that have been like sitting in the wings for, in some cases, 
literally years mm -hmm. and we've done various things. We've done concept art. Maybe we even did some early mock-ups in game. And it's just, I feel like between over the last year and now and over the next year, we're, you know, it's finally yep. all coming into place. Right. So, well, I did like over the years, I did like a first pass at some uniform stuff that at that point we had no idea how we were going to implement. Like we didn't know what the impact in the game would be. Then I did another pass and Anthony uh, modeled up a whole bunch of them just as a test. But at that point it was like, this will give you plus five to shooting. And then we realized like, no, we don't want it like that. We don't want to boost stats in a arbitrary way like that. And then I my, <laughs> had a hard drive crash, and then we finally came back around to, um, yeah, get it up to speed with how we want to implement it in the game. That's game development. Things don't <laughs> yep. always go yep. according to plan. So. <laughs> All right. The big update. The building update. Oh, yeah. Wait. This is If you need to go to the bathroom, go now, because this is the Ah, uh, you're overhyping things thing. again, Julian. <laughs> All right. We'll see in an, hour, in an hour from now, we'll talk about this again cool so um <clears throat> the building update first want to talk about some of the goals that we had um one of the biggest things we've been doing over the last year is since trench warfare we've been collecting a lot of player feedback right and i've personally done a lot of this um talking to players looking at the reddit threads um and really sifting things down to um what the pain points were and making sure that we can address at least many of them in this update. Um, another thing we really wanted to do was we really, one of the th goals that I feel like we didn't quite quite meet in the original Trench Warfare update was um, really having more of a creative aspect, right? So um, it was great that you can make the trenches, but, um, but that was, that was the feature. It's like, great, you can make them and there's some things you can do. But in terms of allowing a player who really wants to spend all their time in the game doing this, um, which there are players that do spend all their time in their game making uh, making bunker bases and trenches, we wanted to give them the, the tools that they um, needed to execute on their vision, right? Um, and we want to add some more content with that to help with that more flexibility. The power mechanics is something that always felt a little bit like a tacked on feature. So we've come back around and added um, some more features there. Um, and then on top of you know the past, like dressing player feedback, making what's there better than now, we also, we're also introducing a new mechanic for building. So one of the, th one of the things that we've heard from, from players is like, hey, can you update the building? So it's just not always about holding down the left mouse button. Um, and certainly holding down the left mouse button is still there for many of the existing parts of the game, but we want to start um, a new frontier, right, uh, for building in the game. And um, this is going to lead to some pretty cool things in the future. Um, and then again, going back to refresh some of the outdated contents, like, sorry, Foxhole and Gun Turret, you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let me uh switch over this is actually this section is going to be um only video so uh, i think it's i think that makes the most sense yes yep um so we're going to start with the pillboxes um which give me a moment here but d didn't we get rid of pillboxes before didn't they used to be in the game they're back so yeah. Pillboxes is going to be the um, replacement for foxholes and gun turrets, and they're going to be the um, new standard for standalone AI defenses, right? Um, so where you have the bunkers for bunker-connected defenses, you have pillboxes for things that you can just um, build without a bunker base. Um, uh, if these do not connect to a trench, no. They're meant to be they placed independently of the trench system. Yes. And you probably see this most spoiled feature um, for the rest of the stream. We are still having foxholes in the game. They're just going to be a um, actual, fo actual, an actual real foxhole. foxhole. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that you can dig with your trench. Um, requires a low number of uh, trench trench digs. And, um, and uh, yeah, so we couldn't 
you know, we couldn't live with the next year of everyone making fun of us because the game's called Foxhole and there's no Foxholes in the game. So I, I'd be making fun of them too. I'd join in in the chorus of people laughing. <laughs> so it's uh... the um, with the pillboxes. The idea of the shape, uh, the hex shape, um, is just uh, for identification reasons. Like if you're looking around with binoculars, if you see a hex, that's an AI. Um, AI defense, basically. Okay, so so this feature, the juicy stuff. this feature was actually <laughs> inadvertently leaked a little while ago. <laughs> yeah, so um, there was an incomplete version of this that we were testing, um, and it was leaked. But uh, tanks can now drive over trenches instead of destroying them. So you can hide under. If a tank drives over you, you'll survive. You can uh, sticky grenade if you want from a trench. So this is a big feature. So um, we changed all the bunker garrisons to have interiors. Um, so one of the big things about this is that um, inside, not only can you run around inside them and you don't have this uh, trench that cuts out halfway, you can also um, have more space to build out your modification. So all the normal modifications that you can make can now be made in a bunker garrison, um, including the infrastructure mods, including a firing port. Um, and what, what, what this was based on a player feedback that people couldn't build trench lines that extend, um, that are continuous, right? It was always has to be a, a broken line. Um, isn't so, that isn't that player suggestion infamous at this point? Like it was that huge post. Oh, there was yes, and yeah. that actually leads into the next one, right? Um, yep. Which is, uh, give me a moment here <laughs> yeah. after this. Yes. Yeah, so, um, no, oh, this isn't. This is one of the other ones. So, infrastructure modifications they actually now provide gameplay bonuses to nearby bases. And defenses, right? So um, be before, if you build it something like a bunk bed, the only thing it was was a requirement for you to upgrade the trench, right? I'm actually going to pause here so we have a bit of time to talk. Yep. Um, so before, your infrastructure modifications were just a requirement, but now they actually provide bonuses for um, your base. So as an example, if you um, make a bunk bed modification, it actually has a chance to not consume a soldier supply um, uh, when a, a player spawns, right? So the idea is the more of these bunk beds that, that you make, um, the more uh, survivable your base is going to be in terms of consuming um, soldier supplies. Uh, and in the same way, if you build a, um, a some of the other structures, like a strategic map, that means that you get a buff to your new buy, new, nearby intelligence sources, right? Um, so they'll be able to um, see players slightly further. And um, we'll get into this more in the dev branch, but essentially these modifications are no longer just there as a requirement. They actually provide a gameplay benefit. So let's continue. So one of the big things that we, we wanted to um, was to update the modification system to make the modifications built on a more granular level. Because right now, you you can't really build an, an airtight defense, right? So the best that you can do is you can try to build a defense where the enemy can't get through. But ultimately, there's going to be spots where they can. But we went through every modification on all these trunkers, trenches and bunkers and made sure that you could build a um, sealed trench network. And moreover, not just sealed, but a directed trench, right? So as you see here, the sandbag modifications prevent the enemy from shooting out towards um, your side of the line, right? So even if the enemy can take over this trench, they can't they can't use it against you. They can't even vault out on that side. Um, so there's always this argument in the game right now. Sometimes players feel like maybe trenches um, shouldn't be built, um, but now there there's no reason why they shouldn't be built. Um, and here, here with the bridge is an example of uh, what I'm talking about. These 
modifications actually scale to um, the barbed wire modification scales so that it just fits in between the bridge, right? So the enemy is not able, like, you're basically able to get every single spot on the trench there. And another big thing, all these modifications work on the trench connectors as well as the normal trenches. So this goes back to the flexibility I was talking about. We want to make sure that if you think you can do it, you should be able to do it. And we looked at, again, every modification and made sure that was there. Yeah. What, so, what about the top of bunker pieces? Yes. So this was another thing. If you think you can do it, you should be able to do it. So there wasn't any reason why we thought that the sandbag shouldn't be buildable on the bunkers, but we needed a way to get up. We needed a way to get up the bunker. So we added stairs, right? Um, so now you can create these uh, firing positions from the second floor of a bunker. And this goes back to what I talked about with the tactical camera. Um, because you need to be able to spot players on top now, holding down the control key will allow you to view um, the top side of a bunker. So you're able to sort of have this combat scenario on both the bottom and the top floor at the same time. Uh, tripods still work. In like you can set up a tripod behind your sandbags on top of a bunker as well, and go nuts. Yes. Oh, um, the sandbags are tier two and three only because setting up sandbags on a net didn't make much <laughs> sense. <laughs> so there's another um, three modifications that we have to show. Um, and one of them that's coming up here soon is going to be the ladder, right? So a way for you to get, um, into your trench, uh, from when you're on top, right? So we want, you know, again, we, we want players to be able to build bunkers that we haven't even seen before, right? So here's the, here's going to be the ladder modification, uh, I think I was like looking for it <laughs> when I was making this video, um, but it allows you to have a ladder into, into your bunker. Uh, Max would kill us if we didn't point out that you can throw grenades down the hole. So if you're up on top, you can huck any grenade you want uh, into someone else's bunker. Hopefully an enemy's uh, bunker. And then now we have the interior firing port. Um, so because we expect there to be more space in trenches and there'd be more combat, we wanted um, a PvP defensive position inside. So you, you can make a firing port and um, you can shoot out of it. And there's one more to go. Which is the trench roof, right? So available for the third tier um, is a a covering over your trench so you can make a tunnel-like network, um, which provides extra cover for things like indirect fire weapons. Um, and on top of that, I just think it, it looks really cool. Um, yeah. you, can walk, you can walk through while you're standing. So uh, Yeah, early in development, you could only crouch through it. And every, every time a new dev tried it out, they were like, oh, man, why do I have to crouch? Uh, but in the final, you can do it normally. Okay, let me take a sip of water here. We, we've got uh, this. We've, we're it, halfway through, guys. Yeah, we're halfway through the building stuff. Okay, so um, we wanted to come back around to power because, um, like I said, it's something that we had tacked on at the beginning. Um, first of all, we are adding a tier two engine room. Um, and uh, again, all the modifications, or not, sorry, not all, but many modifications are available on that room. So you can make a door, you can make the pipes. Um, and the engine rooms now require fuel, um, but they do provide more utility than before. And the mechanics have changed. So rather than them just being a constant amount of power, they actually have a wattage. Um, that gets consumed as uh, structures nearby are um, that use power uh, consume that power. So, for example, this you can fuel it just like you fuel a fire pit, and you can see this engine room is producing three three thousand watts of power, 
right? Um, so it can be used to power your bunk garrisons. And to be clear, your bunk garrisons don't require power to shoot. But if you do power them, they do something cool, right? So power satisfied, they have a light on top now. And um, the bunker light is an added bonus if you power it. And what it does is it gives the bunk garrison extended sight at nighttime. And it will track um, it will track any enemies and shoot them at a distance. It's really fun to be hunted by one of these lights <laughs> when you're in game. I don't. Know, I just. I really like this. Poor silver hand. Colonial bias. So, another use for the power system um, is the new observation bunkers, right? So, players have been asking this for a very long time. Like, let us build another type of watchtower, right? So, this observation bunker here consumes power, but in return, um, the intel radius is much more than a watchtower. Um, and I want to point out as well that you can build, so yeah. You can, as you can see here, it provides much more intel at the cost of um, power. And on top of that, there is a um, tier two variant as well. And like everything else, going back to that flexibility, you can build modifications on the inside. Um, no tier and one. one no. And there's one really cool thing that is coming up. The next super weapon. <laughs> the, the, net, the, the next storm cannon. The next, yeah. The next super weapon. Um, but it might not be what you think, right? So, this, the, what's coming up, I'm super excited about. Not, not to hype anyone up. Yeah. <laughs> Julian, yeah, I stopped. <laughs> next features. Okay. So, the intelligence center, right? So, um, what the structure does is it intercepts enemy intelligence at a distance. So it doesn't, it's not like StarCraft Scanner, for those of you who have played that, where you can see, but what it does is it listens to enemy intel sources in an area and it provides that intel in turn for your own team. And why this is important, um, besides it being cool, uh, is, well, let's stop here and look at this. So right now the intelligence center is stealing intel from um, some watchtowers and observation bunkers that the wardens have made, right? Um, and you can see it flashing. So what this, why this is important is because up till now, the Intel game has been nothing but spamming watchtowers. But, but now you actually have to be careful where, let me pause this, you have to be careful where you put your Intel because there is a downside now. If you just spam them across the entire map, you're giving the enemy free reign to be able to look into look into your Intel network, right? So so this might be frustrating for some players, but um, we feel that the Intel game in Foxhole has been long overdue with for a little bit more depth. And we think that um, adding a downside um, on top of adding a buff with the observation bunkers is going to make the Intel game a lot more interesting. And along with this, besides the super weapon version, you can, um, also, as a partisan, put down a listening kit that performs the same function. So you can listen in on enemy intelligence sources if you put down um, this listening kit, which does require a tripod. This is my favorite. This is the true <laughs> super weapon because um, you can set them up in a field, set them up in a bush, and uh, get intel from enemy watchtowers and bases. Yeah, and, and it's important to note that you will be able to find them. Uh, there'll be like audio cues and stuff, even if they're hidden. This will be yes. like a an interesting addition to the game, I feel. Yep. Uh, we wanted to create a new role of spies and uh, info, <laughs> info stealing. So if you, well, if you want to uh, run into, uh, if you want to run behind enemy lines and set up a bunch, you're doing a ton of help for your own team. Yeah, I always felt that... Um... We want to come back around and do an Intel update, and we haven't done that, but we managed to sort of sneak in a small, a smaller Intel update into this one. The um, the second gigantic building in the game is a small Intel update. 
so but that so finally that, yeah, that's getting not to, everything <laughs> getting to the tools um <clears throat> so this is most of this was based on the player feedback first of all the scalable trench connector right so this was a lot of work um but now you can scale your trenches when you place them so you don't have to build two and then place the trench connectors in between. You can control it. You can rotate the edges. Um, and again, going back to that flexibility, right? Um, so this, this I think, will alleviate a lot of the frustrations around using trench connectors right now. And it will also empower players to be able to build uh, more in a more creative way, right? Man, this is so cool. <laughs> and of course, you can oh. always build like the standard size. Well, the standard size should still be the one that's used across uh, longer distances because it is um, it is longer, it's more cost effective, and it supports the bridge modification. Um, so it still should be. Um, I encourage you know people to still use the standard one. But we didn't. We we really didn't want that to be like a limiter, right? Uh, small thing. Once you play the game for like a day without your backpack on, the old screenshots of the game look like they they're just out of date. Like the no backpack guys are freaking great. <laughs> it's like what's wrong with yep. all these engineers running around? <laughs> is sort of the thought <laughs> I had. So. One of the biggest um, pieces of feedback that I've that I've gotten from uh, players that like to spend um, all their time making trenches and bunkers is that they don't have the control they need to execute on their vision. Right. So um, right now there are some rules in the game to give you some control. Like if you build a bunker of six tiles, there's a magical rule that suddenly other players are not able to. Um, modify those bunkers but we we wanted to really come back around and give players full control so um we added a, a bunch of new tools um at the bottom of here so we added the reservation system which we'll show first so if you reserve you can click on that and like the reserve stockpiles it reserves this trench for you or bunker for up to 48 hours you, you can come back to refresh it if you want but during those 48 hours other players are not are not, a, are not allowed to modify your trenches. Um, you can remove it at any time, um, and we think this will really help players in giving full control and being able to ex to execute on their designs. Trench demolishing, another highly requested features. So you can demolish a trench if it's reserved for you, um, and. Uh, it can be done. There's there's certain rules around it, so you can't do it if there's enemies that are nearby, um, and you can only do it within three hours after the the um, trench is created. I'm gonna pause there, and they do work on the on the husks as well. So we're starting with it just working on the tier one trenches, but it's something that because there's a lot of gameplay implications of it. We're going to iterate on a feature and see if it makes sense to move it to some of the other trench types. But if you didn't reserve a bunker, you can still remove it with the fill in feature. So you can fill in um, a trench now. And um, we um, need a different animation for the fill in shoveling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some visual polish that probably yeah. have to work on that, in the future. That, that will come, yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. And it's this that works not the demolish, which I misspoke about. It's actually the fill in um option works on the husks, right? So hopefully cleaning up the mess of a trench network is um we have a path to that now. Gotta pause for this one because it, yeah. this is this is just so cool, right? Yeah. So this is a players been asking this for like three years. I remember a Reddit post asking because players build AI defenses, they're always a little bit uncertain about um, what it can see it and what it can't until update forty six. Right? I love so, how every time you pause, it's like, and now for the real feature of the update. Yes. So now it renders the field of view <laughs> and 
that's not just the field of view. It shows you where it can't see. So as you'll see in a moment, um, as the build ghost moves, it, it, it shows you this blind spot. So if you're a builder, you have better information on where, where to build your AI defenses. And, and this, I, I'm so excited about this feature just because it's, it's, it's been so long. Players have been asking for this one for so long. Uh, it won't block, be blocked by like a vehicle if it's parked somewhere. Yes, so you can't use it to cheese. Yeah. <laughs> And it also works on yep. Bunker AI defense. But Mark, what else could there possibly be? <laughs> we, we, we've got All to right. be we've got to be done by now. This is the last this is towards the end, so we can we can start to like down hype it. There's not that much more. Um, this is the end. So one more thing that I want to show, which was the new uh, building mechanic I was talking about. So this is not whereas everything else we've shown is sort of the refinement. This is new, so it is going to feel raw and new. Um, and this is the one of those things where we put it into the game. And there's much more we're going to add to it. So the first version is going to feel light on content, but we hope to um, add to it, right? So um, that is going to be frontline building. So there's a new activity for building at the front. Um, so we revisited things like sandbags and barbed wire uh, and tank traps, and we want to make it into a more cooperative experience. So rather than someone walking up to a building, holding that left mouse button, you actually carry um, the sandbags up, and or the metal beams, or the barbed wire, and you can cooperatively build, right? But there's, there is something, there's a few really cool things about this. First of all, we've, we've brought the scalable technology to these defenses. So you can scale them out, and we've also used spline-based technology to add curve. So you can curve your sandbags to, to your liking, and they still snap. Um, so this is going to be a much more cooperative experience, like what we've seen with the artillery and ammo being a large item. And um, going back to the creativity, you know, we want players to be creative with this stuff. We, we want them to build things in ways that we haven't seen them build before. So um, this applies to the barbed wire as well. And as you can see, you can still snap everything. Yep. Uh, and you can or snap. you can now snap it. I don't know if you could. You can, uh, you can snap a second row of either barbed wire or sandbags to the line of the previous one. Like you can, you don't have to retrace it out. You can just add a second layer to it. It'll auto snap if you want. I forget the key to do that, but. You can curve them around trees. You can curve them around walls. Um, and these materials are built at the construction site and they're brought up to the front. And these sandbag walls, you can upgrade it into the taller version as well. Um, metal beams for the tank traps. Yep. Uh, we're also going to railroad it into a different feature. I'm but excited not, for not, that. Not sure. right now. Yeah. <laughs> we're, whatever whatever application I'm talking about, we're excited for. But for now, for now, it's tank traps for the large metal beams. Uh, people are say, talking about. Um, the, the Fight Club's uh, <laughs> way more wow. interesting. <laughs> most most important. Uh, most important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the the barbed wire does does scale it well. Um, there is another. Like I said, we're not showing everything on the stream, but there is another barbed wire structure that's coming, which is uh the bar the barbed wire wall, um, and that one doesn't. You can't walk. You cannot walk through it. 
um, which is a difference, right? Um, it's similar to the old chain link fence, right? Yes, which yeah. still exists, but it's a uh, it's um, it, there's going to be slightly different behavior, but you'll learn more about that yep. in a dev branch. Um, so I just love the mm -hmm. I love the curve feature. Every everyone can praise Casey for this because he he did all the work. There's another cool. Um, there's two more cool things about this feature um, that we're gonna get to in a moment. You mean we're not done yet? What? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, one of the benefits of these defenses is that when they're knocked down, they will drop um, a good portion of the resources needed to build them. So you can restack the walls, or you can put them back on a pallet here and save them for the future. But um, it's it's just another another benefit that we're adding to this um, again this whole new mechanic that we still you know this goes back to the trying things that are new thing I talk about but this is really cool um, this is an example of something you can build in a town now yeah this when I saw this it was crazy and <laughs> finally you can build on bridges um, so. This this has been one of again <laughs> the most asked for features. So I only saw this this morning. Like this was new to me, and I was blown <laughs> away. I didn't know we'd done this yet. <laughs> okay, let's uh, switch back here to. Change. What happens when you open the bridge? Well, hey, hey, we're well, not in Q and A yet. We're I'm not just in saying, yeah. if, hey. you, if you put some sandbags on a big ass bridge and you opened it, what do you think would happen? So there's our tiny building update. There's the <laughs> so Foxhole Entrench coming out September 22nd. Um, Dev Branch starts tomorrow. Um, but it wouldn't be a foxhole big update if we didn't add in some tanks, right? Yeah. So I think I've seen one before. So <laughs> you've seen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Matt. You were saying no, no. Go ahead. Go keep going. Yeah. Uh, Julian, do you want to talk about these ones? I think you. Yes. Uh, the heavy line tank, a uh, designation of tank that is new to foxhole. Um, this will be the first tank that features a coaxled ballpoint mounted machine gun in the turret. Uh, I know people, all the tank fans out there have been asking me forever that they want one. Um, and we decided to give it to the Colonials because we're biased, clearly. Uh, no, it's a commander operated uh, ballpoint machine gun. Um, so like the other vehicles where the commander can hop in the hatch and control the gun, the same goes here. Um, this thing is a beast. It is the biggest tank except for the non-existent battle tanks in the game. Uh, it is basically, we wanted to design a brawler, something that could take a lot of hits and it can take a lot of hits, um, and needs to kind of get in closer. But, uh, basically it has a short mounted, a uh, short range 30 meter, um, yeah, it says it there, 35 meter to 68 millimeter. Um, but to compensate for its range, it has a uh, faster reload than most other tanks, which basically there's good ergonomics inside the turret. It has a really big turret, and uh, the gunner has lots of room to move around and load uh, at his leisure. Yeah. There's, yep, there's your next look at it. All right. Uh, oh, I, oh. Spoiler. Yeah, oh, spoilers. Yeah. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say was this will be uh, this tank is made in a new region that a uh, new colonial territory, and thus I know some people have asked me about this. It has its a new colonial suspension system because people had said that colonials all their tanks have the same suspension system. Uh, not anymore. And now the uh, Warden Cruiser tank, which is my personal favorite. Um, it uh, 
Colonial sorry, Wardens have not had a fast, agile tank yet. Everything's been slow or can only drive forward and backwards and can't turn that well, like the Silver Hands. Um, well, no more. They have their uh, Lamborghini. As I, I've called this thing the, the Warden Lamborghini. This is the Lamborghini of tanks. Um, it's less durable uh, than other, like it's the, it's the least durable of the Warden medium tanks. Um, but it makes up for it with an increased range uh, and features a hull-mounted um, the storm gun on it, storm rifle. Um, yeah, and I love the name of it. I love Matt, Matt gave it a wicked name. So, <laughs> and I guess the so one of the main roles of this one is for it to be a flanking tank. Yes. Right? Yes. We wanted this to flank. We wanted it to not fit in to a battle line of warden tanks because it'll literally go faster than like when you're. Um, you also we have video. Um, yep, I'll bring that up. But now. yeah, it's been the the slow moving warden tank line. Uh, this thing is not uh, doesn't feel at home there. All right, let me. I believe that um, some of the. the... Fit and polish around this is a work in progress, so keep that in mind. Just yep. yelling. Uh, this is... All right. Can you guys? Can I see that? Yep. yep. Cool. This is to show the scale of the Bardish tank. It is huge. And here's your new camera, coaxial machine gun, turret, and everything working all together. And the colonial uniform. And the colonial tanker uniform. Yeah. I really like the treads on this, these guys. Yep. Y'all did a great job. The coaxial gun will require the commander to yell at the gunner to turn if he's trying to shoot down infantry. <laughs> and I, I look for, I want, I literally wanted more reasons for the commander to yell at the rest of the crew in the tank. Yeah, this is a, a big, chonky boy. <laughs> and here's the uh, Lamborghini with its sweet sweet turn radius, turning ability, and uh, shift boost. So this is the speed when you activate boost? <clears throat> yep. Uh, it does have, over when it's not boosting, it's not the fastest tank by design. So you want to be, if you're moving around and you want to be flanking, you need to be boosting. And there's that nice power turn there then. <laughs> Alright, Tokyo drifting. <laughs> so yeah, we could we couldn't have an update without adding some new vehicles. Especially a major update without adding some new vehicles. Uh, so there you go. Oh, we missed the second render. Oh, all right. How did that go <laughs> we, before anyway? <laughs> yeah, how did that get mixed up? Okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, so, you know, again, more changes coming in the debt branch. Um, and to talk a little bit more about uh, that. Before that, though, I did want to touch just very quickly. Um, we're very out of time, but I just wanted to mention that um, there's there's a lot more over the next year. So um, this was sort of the part one of our 1.0 release. Um, and the, the next big update is going to be um, beginning of next year, and you know, it, it, I just want to be clear that's not going to stop then. And I hate these number things because for us, there's no difference. We're just going to keep working on the game. Um, the show is going to keep on going, and 1.0 isn't isn't anything special. It's just going to be the same as it was over the last year. It's going to be the same the next year, and the same over the year after that. We're just going to keep on pushing towards these goals that we have been pushing for towards over the last five years. Um, and hopefully for many years to come. Um, and practical matters for um, our release schedule, Dev Branch Part 1 comes tomorrow. 
Um, there's going to be a series of blogs uh, for this update. So one you can expect next week that's um, expanding a little bit more on the world. Um, we're going to launch Dev Branch Part 2 next week, uh, the next next Tuesday. And then we'll also get a post of all the concept art because there's some, a lot of amazing concept <laughs> art yep. that Julian worked on, possibly even the most across any update. Um, it, it, combi it combines a little bit of what was supposed to be in Winter Army. So it's naturally bigger than the rest. But it's yes, bigger there's, because there's ton, yep. we cheated. So yeah, we cheated. Yeah. <laughs> um, so and finally, the release on September the 22nd. Um, so and I, was that's, I was giving yeah. people a whole bunch of shit about making fun of us because like um, summer's like over. But I was like, oh, but summer doesn't end until September 20. Uh -huh. Technically. <laughs> This is the fall <laughs> update. <laughs> anyway. It's, no, wait, that we're going that's by our calendar, but this is the cal this is the foxhole calendar. We're still well into summer. In, yeah. Like in lore, we're still well into the summer. There's no so. September anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um we, oh yeah, we so so we're gonna only we're gonna do a QA, but we're only gonna ask a couple of questions uh here. We're, we're probably gonna keep it pretty short because this has already been a really long stream. Um uh we are gonna open up uh, just a QA stream uh on uh, on Reddit. Uh so more questions will be answered there over time, uh as opposed to doing it all at once here. Um sound good everybody? Um all right, I'm gonna look for a couple of good questions related to the update. Um Good question by Orion Ox. Is sandbag cost scaled with the length? Can we do so shorter sections to get a line up faster? Um, right now, the cost does uh, not scale. Um, but again, we're balancing the economy for the sandbags throughout the debt branch. So things could uh, change there. But at the moment, um, they cost a fixed amount. I believe it's four. But we are open to a lot of what's happening around these because it's new. Um, it's going to require a lot of tuning. We want to make sure it doesn't um, feel, in practice, it doesn't feel too much of a grind. So that number can drop down. Um, but that's where we want. That's where we want your feedback, right? So it's balancing between that, between grind, and making sure that you can't just like spam them down really quick, like uh, almost too quickly, right? Um, but that's a really good idea. We should we should note it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this is a really good question, um, and I saw it uh, mentioned a whole bunch while we were uh, while we were, talk while we were uh, uh, showing off the content. Um, uh, King T Wood Thirty asks, "Will there be a dedicated system for requesting logistics in light of the increased production slash delivery times caused by changes to the map and deliver and, and and all the new mechanics?" Um, so, so, yeah, so um, definitely not for this update. I think with regards to that question, um, we've, we've thought about that sort of system in the past, and I do feel like having better ways for logistics to coordinate is a good idea and something that we should visit in the future. But the one thing that I don't, um, that we've sort of been careful of is we don't want to, if we do improve those tools, we'd rather get people talking to each other um, through voice, through text chat, um, and not so much through a UI, because we want players to work together, not not through the UI, um, but 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 more through actual um, talking. So I think if we do improve those systems in the future, it might be more along the lines of what we've done with the Logitech channel. Obviously, that was very basic. Um, but if we want to add more sophistication, we want to just that's in the cards. But we just want to make sure that we keep people talking to each other as opposed to talking through uh, like a bunch of like buttons or something, right? So. Um, and this is a question, uh, and I'll make this the last question for today, um, because this is one that a lot of people ask as well. Um, uh, I'm just kind of trying to hit some broad questions that I saw. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Malik, Malik here asks, um, can, op uh, can the opposing faction steal uh, the other faction's uniform? Uh, no, no, they cannot. So we <laughs> there was there was a lot of um talk about that. Like maybe you can swap a uniform, maybe you can be a spy, and that can spiral out into a whole spy game. Um but it it's an interesting idea, but for this, you know, so much to be done for the uniforms, I think we kind of just wanted to sidestep that um that 
whole issue for the first version, right? So so there's potential for a spy uniform is what you're saying. I mean, it'd be interesting. It'd be, it'd be an interesting idea, but I think we'd want to explore that together. Um, we've thought about, you know, spy updates and things like that, but I think we, you know, that'd have to be a whole thing, right? So. Okay. Great. Yeah, we're going to call it a day uh, with that. Well, uh, so look out for that thread uh, that I talked about on Reddit. Um, we'll obviously, we'll make a post in the, in, in the Foxhole Discord and probably in the Fox, the announcement section of the yep. game um so, so you guys won't be able to miss it um if you have further questions i'm not going to guarantee any like any questions will like all your questions will be answered but certainly uh questions i would say related to this update will be answered uh, as best as we can um so uh yeah I, I think that's about it is there anything um anything else you want to say uh no look out for the dev branch uh tomorrow and that oh yes there's something important so that dev branch is not going to include all these features it's going to include the maps, the technical camera, the weapons, the tanks. Um, but some of the other features will be coming to Dev Branch on Tuesday. So we're going to split it up just so that um, there's ample time for us to process the bugs and the feedback. And um, so we, we're, this was the same in the last big update. We just break the Dev Branch up into phases. So um, look, out, look out for that. That's it. Um, yeah. So next week, um, look out for the the dev blog that, that's going to detail all the the lore behind the different maps that are being added, as well as um, the following week, um, going to be posting all the concept art. Um, so that's going to kind of trickle down as as we get closer to the update. The dev branch is what date, Mark? Are tomorrow. 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 The tenth. So look out for the first part of the dev branch tomorrow. Um, if you've never joined the dev branch before. Just be prepared for things to be unfinished, uh, slash buggy, because that's the point of it. <laughs> um, so, uh, like, don't yeah, don't expect it to be like the launch of the thing. That'll be in a couple of weeks. So, um, look out for the dev branch, and we'll see you guys there. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, HB always says something. So, <laughs> remember what he said. Remember what HB says, <laughs> and then. <laughs> And then uh, uh, if you have some questions, you can ask those in the comments, and sometimes those get, an get answered, too. Um, ba -ba -ba, watch us on twitch.tv slash foxhole game if you're on YouTube. Um, I think that's everything. All right, everybody. Stay right. foxhole.